Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the Zero Hour uh, mission. I'm doing it on console. This is a flawless run, and I'm using none of the nerfed weapons and armor and no armaments. So I'm basically using everything that everybody can get or should have. So we're going to be running this on the middle tree of the Sentinel subclass for two reasons. One, we want resupply and we want controlled demolition. So resupply basically is when void detonators attach themselves to enemies, when they explode, you get you get back ability, you get back energy, grenade, melee. And controlled demolition is attaching void detonators, you know, any any ability attaches them. So we're using this because it's a really easy way to take the tanks out. So we kind of do the job that Whisper was doing without needing Whisper. So the grenades themselves will take the tanks out. We're using catapult jump, which I will be changing. I'll be changing to strafe because I don't like catapult jump. But it's really good when you couple it with line rampants for going long distances. So this is the loadout I'll be starting with. The spiteful fang. I won't be changing any weapons. We'll keep the spiteful fang. We'll keep Yolton and we'll keep 21% delirium. But I will be changing my armor. So we're going to start with this mark, which has machine gun reserves on it. But we will be changing to one with special ammo reserves in it. Uh, special ammo finder, sorry. Uh, we're starting with these with the, the, this leg armor. But we will be changing. We'll be changing the leg armor to the line rampants for the jumping section. Any chest plate does. If you've got something, obviously, with fusion rifle or machine gun or bow or whatever then put it on, but I didn't feel the need to have those things. But I will be changing to the armamentarium to get the second grenade at the boss once we've popped our super. Start with Doomfang pauldrons, but I'll be switching to gauntlets that have heavy ammo finder. And my helmet has machine gun reserves on it. I'll be switching to one with fusion rifle reserves. But we'll do that later on. There is the right time to switch weapons and armor, and I will show you it. There are, there are certain places where I'll have to switch where it's not the best time. But there's nothing I can do about it. But it's worthwhile switching at the best times. When you're standing there and there's nothing you can do but wait to go forward. Can't push it any faster than the, uh, how fast it's going. A couple of or ordnance mods I've got. When I switch, I'll, I've all, I'll always have one ordnance mod on. An ordnance mod, for anybody that doesn't know, is a grenade mod. Just to give me my, recharges my grenade faster. I don't have both ordnance mods on at the same time. So when you get to this first area, we're going to pull out the delirium, and we're going to hit these ads right at the back with a grenade, and you'll see how much damage one grenade can do against a set of ads. I put the rally barricade up, yes, to get the we want the reload, but we also want to suppress any ads that push us. Those two invisibles. And the delirium is just, it's so good. So that's how quickly you can clear an area. Now we're not going to put the delirium away because we've got kill and tally times three. And we got our grenade back. Now, I don't throw a very good grenade here actually. You can have through better. Yeah, I know for people that watch the channel, I, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting a bit of a name for throwing bad grenades. Which is kind of strange because I'm normally really good at it. Well, I'm not... I'm normally better than that. But the grenade does does a job. As you can see, we got grenade energy back because it took out one of the snipers. So now, once we've took out all, all the arc harpies that are around us, uh, shanks, not harpies, sorry, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to pick off these. We're going to use the Yulton like a, like a pulse rifle. We're going to just feather it, just feather it a little bit. And now we've took out all the snipers and all the arc shielded shanks. Now we'll put two two Yolten in each one of these uh, elite shanks. Make sure you're reloaded. That helps. And we'll we'll know we're going to put two in this guy just just to kill him. And that's this area done as well. Now if you run through special ammo with the twenty one percent delirium, you'll overfill your You'll get you'll get your proc overflow, which will 
over 200 rounds in your magazine. That's kind of the way you want to be with that. It's for areas like this that I chose the bow. I didn't want to choose a sniper. As you guys know, I normally use a primary sniper during this run. But two, I didn't really want two weapons that relied on special ammo. And I still wanted the ability to one hit adds. And that's kind of why I use the bow as much as I do. It has been commented that I like to use the bow. No, no secret and no surprise there. But I'll use it if it's the best option to use there. I won't just, oh, where can I fit a bow in here? <laughs> I need to have a bow in this run. So what we're going to do is we're going to take take as many of these solar shanks as we can. Now, we do take a bit of heat here, but as you can see, the Jotun's quite a fast charge uh, fusion rifle. So we managed to get our shots off. Now that we took all the shanks out that were in front of us that we can take out, we're going to pop our super. Now, we've got Doom Fangs on, so I, I, threw, I threw a shield, thrown the shield, Get, that's what gives you a bit, a bit of uh, super back. As you can see, we've got a bit of super there. Throw another shield, get some more. And that's all the ads done. Now we're going to switch. We're going to take off the Doomfangs. And we're going to put on the Armamentarium to take, take advantage of the two grenades. Now I've got a second grenade charging. And what that does, as you'll see, sometimes, just sometimes... You don't get a full grenade back. That was a really bad Jotun shot, but you don't get a full grenade back. So if you've already got the rumblings of a second grenade, so you'll see here we're gonna we're gonna throw the grenade, throw the grenade, kind of get the grenade under the tank. Now we've got another grenade. We can throw another one. the The thing about these servers is, as you can see, I I took out the first one. Uh. I, I didn't really bother about the tank. I didn't bother about the other server. I took one out because if you take one out, you just you you don't have that issue that can happen here where the shanks will will uh, will, def will protect themselves. The other thing is you'll have seen there, and it's it's I'm glad it's there so you guys can know what not to do. If you throw a grenade at the and it hits the leg. If the tank, it'll bounce off. You want it to go in between the legs so it goes completely underneath and the tank takes maximum damage. Now we're going to do the same thing we've done before, just feather the, the delirium. And now two Jotun shots. And that's that's this section clear as well. More heavy. Perfect. That's what we want. Now we're just going to make our way up to the Towards we're going towards the jumping puzzle now. So we're gonna have to change from the armamentarium before we get to the jumping puzzle. We'll change from the armamentarium. You know, make sure we've got our our boots on. Line rampants. I can't actually remember if I've changed them. I might have changed them already. So take out these ads. At a certain point, just norm normally when you get past here, this orb should do it. We're going to get with super. Be careful that you don't do this. Don't do that. Nobody likes that. You, just, you, you don't want to see that. You don't want to see someone throwing a shield and it just bouncing all over the place for no reason. But the super helps you get past this part really quickly. No, I didn't think I'd put them on. So we're going to change from armamentarium. We're going to change the line rampants. And now we're going to change the helmet and the mark. Now, you don't have to change here, but as you can see, if you've gone into your menu, you might as well make as many changes in one go as you can. We've still got 1345 on the clock. We're good. The thing about the jumping puzzle is most people mess up on, or have, uh, mess up, I don't, I don't like saying mess up, have problems with two parts. Trevor's, Trevor's easy. Trevor's easy if you take the right route. But normally, on the normal, it's it's the part coming up. It's jumping underneath the wall. Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the best way to do it. All right? You're going to aim for the main platform. You can actually jump onto one of the little platforms. I've done it many times, but for the purposes of this video, if you're having problems with this jump, then it doesn't make much sense me showing you how to make it even more difficult. So when you jump out over here, turn back, and you'll see a groove in the wall. This groove, you want to. Go down the groove, 
And then when, the minute you see the grate, the minute you see the concrete disappearing and the grate appearing, boost and then cut it off really quickly. What that's done is your first catapult boost will slow you. The next one raises you. So as long as you're not falling at maximum speed, your next one will raise you up. So you cut, you boost, cut off, and then you can, once you've cleared the wall, you can boost again and you'll go back up. That is the best way to do it. Getting up here, it's basically, you, you'll jump on, a, 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 there's two, plat two boxes, two platforms. When you get onto the, la it's a box, platform, box, platform. When you get to the second platform, if you're going round in a clockwise fashion, you're below where you need to jump up. So when you get to that second platform, just there's another lane in the wall, jump straight up the lane and you'll be in front of a grate. That's the grate you need to shoot to get out. A lot of people have problems with these, these, uh, the fans. The simplest way to do it, there's, there's kind of two ways you can do it. The first way is you can, when you jump into the red kind of alcove, the red uh, section to slide past uh, the groove in the wall to get past the fan. If you jump in and look down, you'll see pipes below you. You can slow your descent and land on the pipes. I don't do that. I jump in and I turn. So I'm facing back out the way and boost onto the centre bit. If that is a lot of hassle, just land on the pipe and then jump across to the centre bit. Trevor. A lot of people really don't like Trevor. And I don't know why. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> Highest key. If anybody needs the mountaintop, anybody needs not forgotten, you want to take Trevor in. Because he kills everything he sees and never dies. Highest KD in Destiny. So, as you've seen, I, I waited for him to pass underneath me, dropped down, went left, followed him. Now I'll do L1, L2, I'll go back, and then I'll do I'll jump across the centre, then I'll do R1, R2, and I'll never see Trevor. So now I've took the opportunity, because I had to wait there, I took the opportunity to go into my menu while I was waiting, and change the last things I needed to change. I do need to change my jump, but we'll do that on the left. It's the optimal time to change things is here. Because you're going to have three times where you're standing waiting for that arc shield, that arc wall, uh, defense wall to go down. So why not go into your menu and change what you need to change there? You can't go any faster. To go across the center, I, I just do a, a single jump onto the first pipe and then just a boost over to the second pipe and then a single jump from the second pipe to the platform. So we've done L1, L2, we've done R1, do R2, and we'll never have seen Trevor. Now, I've done this this run, in fact, I haven't done this run in a while, till today. This was like, I, I beat it a couple of times today, uh, but th this one seemed pretty good. I actually done a really good one where I had like a minute and 35 seconds left on the clock, but... I never had my my recording equipment equipment set up, so I recorded it on PlayStation, which recorded one minute fifty one of the run. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but the fact that I done it again so quickly told me this was this was the third time I beat it. Told me that this strategy is it works. It's not that it worked once or it doesn't work very often. It works. So now that we're on the left. I have changed the jump, we've got strafe on, we're good to go. Now when you're sliding down this ramp up here, you'll come to, there's like two pipes on, I think it's two pipes on the left, it's, so you've got the, no, you've got this pipe on the right, this thing, and then when you get to this second, second pipe, it's not enough to just jump up and hit the wall, jump up and boost, because the amount of times I've done this where I've jumped up and died, I don't know if it's a mobility thing, how high you've got your mobility, but even if you just do a hop sometimes, it can kill you. So what I what I like to do is just jump up, boost, back down, and then when I've come off, just do a jump and boost and then cut off straight away so that I'm not flying right past the, the opening. So as you can see, I mean, it took us, you know, 20 minutes, 20 minute mission, and it took us 12 minutes to get here. That's pretty good. 
Now, when we drop down here, same rules apply for most of this. You know, if anybody's seen the Titan run before, or the Warlock or the Hunter run, you're going to take the snipers out first. So we'll back away, we'll take these snipers out, try and get Rampage propped. It's, sometimes it can be quite difficult because they move just as you're about to shoot them. How did that not happen? I wondered that at the time. I was like, that that was a that was perfect, but I did I did get hit there. Now what we're gonna do that's different is we're gonna take out both both of the the turrets. Now Yolton doesn't like turrets. I can't blame I can't say I blame the, the Yolton because I don't like turrets. But the Yolton doesn't like them and destroys them. Same as the Yolton destroys this boss, actually. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take out the turret. So we'll put couple of Yotans and then we'll, get, we'll reload and then we're going to put two on the boss and then we're going to pop with super. Now when you pop your super you want to put hit, hit, the, hit the actual boss with the shield and what that does is it will bounce off off the boss and it'll attach detonators to all the all the shanks. What you want what you want guaranteed is that you've killed all the shanks. And then as I say, you back away, you've got away. If you hadn't have killed the shanks, you wouldn't have escaped that alive. If you hadn't have killed the shanks there, the shanks would have killed you. They, they do a lot more damage to you when you're getting away from that first guy than, than the boss actually does. So as you can see, we don't really, we, we haven't got a lot of Yolton. I just, just, just for your information, that brick of special that I went up to get, I haven't even picked it up. So we'll put one on the boss. Don't take out any arc shanks while the boss is still there because they will respawn. So before we attack this last this last server, just looking for some special, see if there's any more lying about. There isn't, so I'll go back and get the brick that I went to get the first time that I thought I'd ran over and didn't. As you can see, I'm th th this isn't clutch. This is a very, very relaxed run. Look how much damage the Yotan does. That is insane. So we're only going to put two on the boss, on, on the server. And then because we've got so much heavy, we're just going to finish him with the Delirium. Which, as you can see, it really melts him. Now we're going to use some Delirium, some, some uh, Yotan. Because these guys are solar, so we'll just break some shields there and then use a bit of Delirium. Just to see if we can get some special. There we go. We'll take take some more down. We're just what I was doing there was I was just changing my my angle of approach so that the boss wasn't firing at me when I when I popped out. So he's gone. So what we want to do now? We've got some special, more heavy. We're gonna we're gonna go up and we're gonna put some delirium on. We're gonna put some uh, Yotan on the boss. Get him to go. Now we do take a lot of damage here, but this is where we're going to switch from. It. We're going to we're going to go just take. You you seen the explosions that was taking down them shanks. Now we're going to put on more armamentarium, and now we should. That invisible guy just pushed me. Bad news for him. We'll take out some of these invisibles. Now now what you've got now more more special. Jump away from that because that would have killed us. Now what you've got is you've got both tanks out. And it's the same drill. Drop the grenade underneath the tank. Now, I would suggest doing it slightly different to what you'll see in the video here. Do exactly what I'm doing here. But in between, put some Yotan shots on the boss. Now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the invisible. Take out, the, you know, take out any ads that don't need to be up. Now we know we've got one sniper left, but we need to keep peppering the tank. Now I take out a tank at a time. I don't bother taking out. I'm just looking to see what's I've got still up. I don't bother taking, uh, doing a grenade on both tanks. So I'm going to put one Yotan. You'll see here, the Yotan doesn't really track the tank. But we did get that hit. So, one more grenade, and we should be good. 
Now what we'll do is we'll go over, because that's that one tank dead, and we'll take out the second tank. Exactly the same way. Very simple strategy. But except this time, we are going to do what I said to do. Now that we've got one tank down, probably, I've probably done it the right way, actually. It's a guide, so of course I've, of course I've done it the right way. Duh. Like I would ever not do it the right way. It's probably worth taking a tank down. That's why I've done it. And as you can see, I'm still trying to take take uh, get the grenade to land between the legs of the spider tanks. Because you get that massive, massive amounts of damage. There you go. Perfect grenade. And now we're just going to keep hitting the boss. Now what we're going to do to, hit, to keep hitting the boss, this is why we took out the turrets. Because you never know what position the boss is going to be in. So now we've got both sides we can attack from. So the boss and, and the shank are far enough away from us that we can just stay up here through a, uh, as you can see you can stay out of the shanks the radius of the shank and just keep putting the Jotun on the boss now we, we have only got a couple of Jotun left but that's fine because we know we've got Jotun down at the bottom so he's just went underneath there so what we're going to do is we're going to put these last three shots on him and then we're going to put a bit of we're going to put a bit of uh, machine gun on him we're going to get more Jotun and then it's, we'll pop our super. As you can see here, we're going to put some of this on them. Now, machine guns aren't, this is an amazing machine, but not 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 on not on bosses. So he's moved away, which is kind of what we wanted him to do. Come up here, we've got six Yolton. We're, on, we're going to put these five on them. Once we put the five on them, then we're going to pop our super. He is going to teleport towards us. There's just him and the shank left. There we go, pop our super, and that's all she wrote. And just hit him a couple of times. He he goes, jump up, hit the shank, and we're done. And that's the run, guys. Flawless, flawless Titan run on console. No mods, no nerfed weapons or armor. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the run. I have been asked to you know to do this, so this one's for you guys. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Uh, you can always find me on Twitter. And until then, I will speak to you in the next video.